We're next going to turn to Mechanism, where Beth Stevens is going to tell us about her really um, groundbreaking work studying how plasticity is uh, regulated by various cellular constituents in the brain, um, and uh, which led to the really remarkable discovery of, of a mechanism behind a risk for schizophrenia. Thanks, Josh. So schizophrenia is a, is a heritable disorder, as you heard from Josh. It affects 1% of the population and involves impairments in cognition, perception, motivation. And quite interestingly and curiously, the onset is, tends to be late adolescence, early adulthood. But we still know remarkably little about uh, the mechanisms underlying the risk and, these, uh, and the pathobiology of schizophrenia. But emerging genetics is providing new insight. Many genes have been identified over the last many years. Um, and interestingly, much like you just heard from Matt in autism, several of the genes are, 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 are all implicated in synapse development or function or plasticity suggesting potential converging mechanisms. So I think one of the fundamental questions that, um, that is needed to be understood is, is when is it that schizophrenia uh, first, uh, when does the defect start to arise in the brain? At what stage in development? I think it's pretty clear it is a developmental disorder, but we still don't know when, and we still don't know which circuits. And the most importantly, we don't yet understand the mechanisms. And, and I think understanding the mechanisms and the biology um, that these um, genetics are telling us is going to be critical for identifying new therapies and new, new biomarkers. So what I want to do today is tell you a little bit about one example of a mechanism that's been uh, suggested from the genetics and from the biology um, that involves a process called synaptic pruning, which is a developmental process um, necessary for precise brain wiring. So we start off early in development with an excess of synaptic connectivity, and by this process called pruning, a large number of these extra synaptic connections get permanently removed while others get strengthened and maintained. And as you can see from this image here, this is a work by Hutton Loker that looked in the human brain over different time periods using a Golgi stain, for example, and what's clear from this is that in some parts of your brain, like the prefrontal cortex, this pruning process can go on quite late into these early, uh, early adolescence and, and early adulthood, up to, up to 15 years old, for example. And so the idea is there's different critical periods for this remodeling or pruning. It happens at different times in different places. And so we wondered, could um, these pruning help to understand the mechanisms and also the age of onset of schizophrenia? One thing we know that's important is that neuronal activity and experience is really critical for this pruning process. And understanding how this mechanism that normally regulates this process might provide new insights to schizophrenia. Now, there's been a, a, a pruning hypothesis of schizophrenia that's been out there for over 30 years, first proposed by Erwin Feinberg many years ago. And at the time, where he put the idea out that maybe schizophrenia does involve, based on the work of Hutton Locher and others, that maybe it does involve either too much pruning or aberrant pruning at the wrong time and place, and this could be underlying schizophrenia. And this is just a, an example from the Hutton Locher work that just shows the timing in which this pruning happens, especially in the prefrontal cortex in areas involved in executive function. But this theory went pretty much just, no one really, they pretty much ignored him for a number of years, in part because there was no real direct evidence for this. Um, but over the years, more evidence mounted, and I think it's clear that there's evidence of cortical thinning. Uh, imaging studies have also suggested this is happening even in the prodromal st stage. And it's also uh, anatomical evidence. This is a classic paper by David Lewis's lab, the quantified synapse number and spine loss that was observed in the prefrontal cortex, interestingly, uh, in uh, individuals with schizophrenia. And, and so together, this is suggesting the idea that perhaps aberrant pruning or too much pruning could underlie schizophrenia. The issue with all of this is it's not possible to de determine whether this loss of synapses is in fact due to uh, too much pruning. Is this lot too much pruning, or could these have been defects from the beginning? Is this cause or consequence? You know, what could be the mechanisms? And this is where emerging genetics is actually quite powerful. Um, so it's been known that there's a number of genes, of course, that have been increased risk to schizophrenia, and perhaps, and for sure, the, the largest risk resides in chromosome 6 and the MHC locus. And in there, there's hundreds of genes in that locus, but it was until recently not clear which of those genes led to the increased risk. But my colleague Steve McCarroll and his graduate student Ashwin Sikhar, in, in a study published last year in Nature, actually honed in and identified one gene in that pack of genes in that locus that explained largely the risk in schizophrenia at that locus. And that gene turned out to be an immune-related gene called C4, which in the immune system, this is a gene that's normally associated with innate immunity. 
So of course this is a surprising finding to them a number of years before they published this. What is the C4 gene doing in the brain and how could this lead to increased risk? Well, it turns out that there are two different forms of this gene, C4A and C4B, and I'm just summarizing this work to say that we each uh, have multiple forms of this, and the haplotype, meaning the, very, the structural form of this gene, is what they determine increased risk of schizophrenia. So if you have too many copies of C4A, for example, that not only increased risk, but was also associated with an increased expression of the system in the brain, too much complement. And this is just illustrating the idea that multiple copies of this variant C4A led to more risk. And that proposed the idea that perhaps this could be uh, linking somehow biologically to too much uh, pruning. Now, that, the link there came from work done with my lab and Steve's lab because it turned out that we've been studying this, this set of molecules for a number of years uh, in, in development and it had found a role for this group of molecules in synaptic pruning in the developing mouse visual system. And my lab actually has been focused on this group of molecules. And it turns out that in the immune system, what these, group, what these molecules do is they actually help clear pathogens or debris or unwanted cell from the body. And what we discovered is a group of these secreted molecules, C4, as well as other members of the complement cascade, what they actually do is tag synapses in the developing brain for removal or elimination by resident immune cells called microglia. Now, this was work that had been ongoing for my lab for a number of years, but Steve, who was across the street from me, came together and we initiated an interdisciplinary collaboration and joint lab meetings between my group and his group that over the years then has been starting to tackle how it is that this pathway may converge with the genetics to explain uh, pruning. And the idea is here that these molecules are in fact tagging too many synapses in the brain. And the hypothesis is that this could lead to excessive pruning by this mechanism that we've uncovered in the mouse brain. So together we're setting out to test this hypothesis. And in fact, we started thinking about the possibility that maybe through this and other converging mechanisms that are now being uh, initiated through, through the genetics, that this may lead to uh, an understanding of the timing, which is this adolescent period. This is the last part of your brain to myelinate, to develop, and prune. Could it be that the timing of pruning in this part of the brain might explain that, that uh, curious onset? We also want to better understand how environment and, and, other, and, and other factors might converge with the genetics. What are the environments? Uh, could this serve as a second hit, for example, in some, some individuals? And all of this work together, of course, have raised many questions that we're now actively um, seeking to address. We, we need to better understand what is going on in the developing brain. We've been studying, for example, synaptic pruning early in development, but there's still very little known about what's happening in this adolescent window and why adolescence is a period of remarkable vulnerability. Why and how does environment converge with the genetics in this model and in others? And, and, and we absolutely have to understand this more deeply to understand how and when to intervene in the situation. And there's also an urgent need for new and early biomarkers that can tell us when and who to track. And I think this is some of the work that's ongoing with uh, my lab and those at the Stanley Center, is to take some of the basic science and mechanisms we've uncovered, even in the mouse brain, to start to nominate and to, to, to uh, identify new PET image, imaging biomarkers as well as CSF biomarkers that could help us to better understand. So I'll just end there, uh, and this is sort of some of the questions that may come back in the Q&A today. Thank you.